uh, as you can see, we can do some pretty cool stuff here. I'm moving the part around we were looking at. I can redraw it, and it uh, draws it in a vertical plane. You come up here, and you can choose to rotate it. Uh, this is the part we made. I don't think it has the same 100 micron resolution we've been looking at. Uh, that's why it looks a little better. And you can zoom right in. You can also pan it if you need to. So we can pan it around. I'll zoom in some more. And if you want to, you can select one of the motions, click on it, and it goes right to the G-code part that did it. Um, in some cases, it's nice to be able to see what your G-code does. So in this case, we will take a block of code, and we can come back here and plot it. And that is the exact pattern that we just highlighted from the G-code. OK, so that's a little bit about just the, the viewer and the G-code interpreter. Um, one thing you're going to see here is, is we have a lot of tools. We have up to eight extruders. So it's, let's suppose you'd like to change between extruder heads. That's real easy to do. We have a tool crib over here. And uh, this will be changed so it updates towards the extruders. This is based on a CNC program we've already owned for a long time. And we'll change the plot color from, uh, yeah, let's put it in yellow now. So now tool three, or extruder head three, will be shown in yellow. Two is per, uh, fuchsia, and number one is a uh, lime color. So the next thing you want to do is to see that. I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can change a tool manually. And that is uh, we'll find some part in the build that we like. And um, we're going to go ahead and throw in the command to insert the tool. That's uh, N6T3. So that tells it to use tool 3 or extruder head 3. T stands for tool. And that's standard G-code nomenclature. And now I will reprint the part. And you can see now that the part is made of three different colors. The base was made out of green, the middle yellow, and the top one a fuchsia. And this will be whatever material you wanted. So you could actually load those three different colors into three different heads, and they would print. And you can ping pong back and forth to any color you want. Now, one thing you can also do in this case is you'll notice that we can build the part, slide the slider bar, and build it up and down. And that's kind of a nice feature, I think. Gives you a chance to watch it. And if it gets confusing, you can slide the back bar up. And you can see each layer as you wish to go. We have another viewer that lets you go layer at a time, but I haven't shown that yet. Well, it'll be one of our next things to polish off. OK. That said also is, if you'll notice over here, we have the extruder control for manual operation. So each of the eight extruders have its own control panel. And uh, if you go to extruder one, and you can turn the power on and off manually, or if the program is turning it on or off, that will reflect here. Uh, if the temperature is within a certain number of degrees of the program temperature, then you are able to do these functions. And you'll see you can jog the material this many pulses. You can also change the scale factor so that if you are using code from another printer that, say, 3,000 is their speed, uh, you can say, based on this scale factor, that should be 5,000 or 400. You just give it the scale factor, and that way you can easily move programs from a different print head or a different printer, and still you don't have to do any modifications to the G-code itself. Uh, this is one that runs, so if you click this, it will run continuously, and it will run at this rate. So as this rate is changing, the feed rate would also change. Uh, this allows you to jog back X number of pulses. It would stop it and run backwards as many pulses and then stop. Uh, there you go. And this enables or disables the heater. If the heater is disabled, so is the jogging function. Um, probably will allow an override on the jogging but you'll have to double click or right click on it to make it work because we don't want you accidentally moving the material when the material is not molten at the fusion chamber. This would create problems. You also have a hot bed where you can set up the hot bed. And we have a power factor which lets you uh, characterize your heater. There are so many different hot beds on the market that some of them require more power to reach a certain temperature. So by having a power factor in there, you will more quickly get to temperature. Uh, the other thing is turbo boost option. And if you click that, we actually pump the 12 volts up to a higher voltage, slightly higher voltage, which increases the power going into the heater during the preheat time. We do not do that normally during the regular build time. It's just we want to get to temperature quicker. 
and that's why we use that. Uh, this again enables or disables manually. Um, that's it. And then motion, you have the ability to incrementally move X, Y, and Z to home the X or Z, Y, or X uh, individually, home them all, or zero, or I shouldn't say zero, but center the build platform. And uh, we have an optional Z offset so that we can home in the opposite direction and then retract. This will become very useful and I think it will become the standard because you can home away from the part. Therefore, if you are in the middle of a build, you can actually home the z-axis down away from the print heads and then recover in the middle of a build. Okay, so uh, that's the way it works and uh, give you a more preview later. I hope you enjoyed this.